Hey, because I tried something new when recording this video, unfortunately it has become a slideshow. So feel free to minimize it and maybe take a look every once in a while. There isn't going to be much movement outside of my camera and occasional outdoor inserts. Yeah. Never using hardware encoding again. Hey, it's Anfa. There is a new distortion plugin on the block. It's called Chow BYOD for Build Your Own Distortion. Let's go. Hey, I'm Anfa. This plugin is relatively new. I have heard about it like a couple of weeks ago, and I wanted to make a video about it because I think it's pretty interesting and can be very useful. Let's go. So here is BYOD. It's a node-based pedal board, pretty much. So I'm fitting a sine wave into it right now. And as you can see, we have like BYOD is this top part of the screen, by the way. The bottom part is uh, X42, Simple Scope and Spectacle. Uh, so spectral analyzer so we can see what's going on and mm, we'll see the differences between both signals when we start applying some processing so inside of the plugin you can bring up a bunch of other plugins basically a built-in set of processors that you can arrange in any way you want you can connect them with virtual cables you can create basically a pedal board full of different effects, a bunch of different distortion models, a bunch of different guitar amp simulators, equalizers, filters, noise gates, compressors, reverbs, delays, lots of stuff. So we're gonna have some fun with that. Okay, so what do we do is we right click in here to add a processor. Look at how many different distortion algorithms we have here. And yeah, <laughs> let's go with Centaur because that's the first one. This is Centaur. So to act in, it, like add this into this signal path, we need to remove the connections and now create new connections. And now you can see a difference between the red or orange and green signal. So green is processed. Red is raw. So you can see if I move the saturation all the way down, we still have a little bit of saturation in here. We have like a first harmonic. And we certainly have some uh, latency added. As you can see that the phase of the sine wave has changed. If we increase the gain. It's interesting because it seems like the latency is lowered Probably it's just a little better aligned with the frequency if I play a different note. Actually, yeah, it seems like it's lowered. That's interesting. <laughs> By the way, this is the uh, intermodulation distortion phenomenon. If you have a single sine wave or a single tone, pure tone, a higher one or maybe i will enable most tracking so i can play gentle notes and now we add a second tone if we play this louder you can see we have all this weird inharmonic kind of stuff happening that's because our two tones when distorted together create a bunch of inharmonic tones which are derived from the difference between the frequencies of the two tones, etc. This is what's in harmonic. This is what's called the intermodulation distortion, and it's relevant if you like, um, if you're trying to play back clean sound. And you, basically, if you um, put distortion onto anything like your master or, or a piano or a, a guitar, as long as there are just one tone playing, it's gonna be, no, there's, there isn't going to be any intermodulation distortion, but when there is more than one tone, 
playing. And th the important thing is that the tones can't belong to the same harmonic series. If I play an octave, so... This acts like the same harmonic series, so there is no intermodulation distortion. But if I play one of the notes off, you can see we have all this weird kind of dissonant stuff going on, and that's intermodulation distortion. <laughs> That's a complete tangent. This wasn't even supposed to be in this video. <laughs> anyway, so this is Centaur. I guess this is post... post game. Okay, we have a cog wheel. What is there? Traditional and neural. Okay. The neural version seems to be much more gentle. Uh, maybe I need to push the input harder. Let's see if I can get something like a utility. Is there like an amplifier that will just clean gain? Perfect. Oh, that's very nice. It's good that he called it clean because, you know, this plugin is all about distortion. So normally, um, yeah, doing something clean isn't really typical. Whoa, wait, does it? Oh no, it's just me using, playing different notes. Okay, I'm gonna disable input. Uh, velocity sensing. <laughs> this is really nice. Let's compare this to the traditional. I like the neural much more. It has a certain rasp to it. Wow. <laughs> like, just a sine wave and lots of clean gain and the centaur on neural at 100% and it's just like, this sounds cool. What about adding a little bit of white noise to the mix? I'm using Vitalium, uh, by the way under the hood for uh, actually making the, the tones. <laughs> Here it is. Okay, that's way too much. Oh, nice. You can also by bypass. Interesting. Even, you know, even when it's uh, the gain is zero, you see we have a high frequency uh, loss, which makes a lot of sense. And we do have some sound saturation. You can see these, these saturation peaks are there. Let's see what happens if we go even lower with the signal. Okay, so that's Centaur. That's just one module. Let's add another one. Drive, Diode Clipper. So this is going to create asymmetric distortion, I believe. Now you can see the cool thing is we can branch out and have multiple signal paths. We can't, however, uh, merge them easily, but we can do, we can use a mixer, so utility mixer. And here we have four channel mixer. We can plug a bunch of things in here and then <laughs> sounds awesome and then we have uh, I think it would be nice to be to also have a, like a mute button for every mute and solo for every one of them that's a that's a thing for a f future <laughs> version of uh, of Chow BYOD whoa the diode clipper it's not what I think it is Wow, that's nice. That sounds really cool. Diodes, number of diodes. Point free diodes, type of diodes, wow.
I see barely any difference. Let me tweak the... Let's tweak this oscilloscope a little bit. Okay. So now you're seeing the inner workings of my carefully uh, tweaked setup to give you a... Oh no, that doesn't work very well. Ah, the noise is throwing it off. Okay, it's because of the noise. That should be a little better. What's the cutoff? Okay, so that's a low pass. I'll turn up my my headphones. Whoa. Now I can hear this. <laughs> oh. Let's see what happens. What is here? Replace. All right, so we can easily... Emulation of a simple diode waveform clipper circuit with options for different configurations of diodes. Okay. And what about the Centaur? Emulation of the Clone Center Overdrive pedal. Use the right-click menu to enable Neural Mode. Ah, the right-click. I think they meant the cogwheel. Yeah. Mixer together for input channels. Perfect. Okay, so we have diode rectifier. Ooh. I'm gonna maybe not use the mixer for now. Holy snap. Okay, that's that's asymmetric. Or is it? I mean, I know it is because I can see it. We don't have an output uh, level control, so I'm going to use the mixer for that. Yes, it is asymmetric distortion. So you see, the cool thing is because this is all modular, we can just uh, do something ridiculous, like pipe all of them one into each other. And we have something like this. which interestingly has gotten away with a lot of our noise. <laughs> interestingly enough, it sounds kind of mid-rangey. We can bypass any of the modules. <laughs> right. Drive dirty tube. What is a dirty tube, Mike? Show me. That's quite simple. This is interesting. I wonder if the noise is coming from the tube or not. I'm, I need to actually <laughs> check my check Vitalium. Oh my, where is it? Oh, there it is. 
I need to, I'll disable the input noise. No. The dirty tube does not in, add any noise, but look, well, the white noise is very revealing. It's interesting because it seems like there isn't much actual saturation change, but there is a lot of like compression. Look how our noise comes to the forefront. I don't know, interesting. Uh, each of these processors have a very, has a very different characteristic. One thing about uh, BYOD is that the canvas is not stretching. It's, uh, it's, it's a fixed size. However, you can change the zoom level. Right here, you can see the zoom i wonder if there's oh there's also here yeah we can zoom in and out and zooming oh we can actually zoom way more we can 177 i'm trying to keep it as big as possible so uh it's easy to watch even on a phone so at some point i will have to zoom out to see more <laughs> more of the modules maybe i'll arrange it like this Input, top left, output, bottom right. All right, so what are we doing now? I could turn down the noise a bit on the input. Now, another interesting thing about BYOD is that it has some really cool settings Look at this. We have oversampling, which by default is times two, and it goes up to times 16, which is insane. Um, but we can also dif disable that. And there is also mode, uh, filter mode selection. We can, by default, if we are, of course, using minimum phase. And we can also switch to linear phase. Uh, I mean, we can try, <laughs> but uh, it just crashed our door. Okay, so we had one go at BYOD, and we determined that switching to linear phase is gonna crash your entire DAW. That's, that's good to know. Let's uh, explore further then. What do we have here? Distortion plus. Distortion plus what? Virtual analog emulation of the MXR Distortion Plus Overdrive pedal. All right, let's let's hear it. Oh, that's rowdy! Oh wow! It, even at like you know lowest distortion, it's already crushing it. Look, it has a very interesting characteristic, like, this is distortion. I would normally think a distortion is gonna, like, push the signal into a square wave, but no, look, this makes our sine wave into a triangle wave. How is that even possible? Of course, the wave is gonna change differently. Like, it kind of becomes a square with, uh, like, lots of slew limiting. I don't know. It's interesting. <laughs> I'm playing two notes. Uh, a semitone apart. I think, yeah, oh, then... Vitalium's noise sampler is not randomized, so it... Um, yeah, let me randomize it. That's that's a that's a Reese. I've heard that a long time ago when there wasn't a lot of complex sense to go around. People were just playing, you know, two notes at a synth like a sawtooth oscillator to make a Reese. It's kind of like that. I'm playing two notes, so like the resulting pitch is actually somewhere 
um, <laughs> in the middle. So if I wanted to play a C, I should actually play two nodes lower and higher. Yeah, so I'm playing H and B. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna play. <laughs> I'm playing B and and uh, D and C sharp. And the perceived pitch is is in line. Yeah, that, that's a trick. That, that's something you can do. It's not perfect in higher octaves, but it works. I could live with that. <laughs> so that's Distortion Plus. Let's see what else there is. Guitar ML. All right, so Guitar ML is a completely like a separate thing. It's made by Keith Bloomer and Jatin Jaton Chowdhury. Chowdhury, I don't know. So, um, an implementation of the neural long short term memory guitar amp modeler, modeler used by the Guitar ML project. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, actually, the author of Guitar ML has reached out to me some time ago asking if I would like to make a video about his uh, plugins and I wanted to, but I never got to it yet. So, hey, now we have a chance to kind of talk about his plugins because uh, his plugin Guitar ML is included, like the processor is included in BYOD. Let's hear it. Whoa. That is a an amp sim if I've ever heard one. Wow. <laughs> that thing has bite. <laughs> oh man. Wow. Look at this. That's amazing. It's like a It sounds like a like an internal combustion engine. Really? It it creates these pulses. How does this even work? I have no idea, but it sounds really cool. Wow. I'm really learning that there's lots more to distortion than just making signs into squares. Wow. So we have a model called Blues Junior and also TS9. Oh, wow. Sounds really cool. Let's play our Reese. That sounds so cool. Also, I've just realized that the knob doesn't have actually a... The knobs... Um, <laughs> can you see that the center of the knob isn't actually in the center? Something isn't perfectly straight here. Something's a little bit crooked. Crooked? Crooked? I don't know how to say that. Okay, Guitar ML. Amazing stuff. Whew. Chow BYOD is obviously intended for use with guitars, but what can it do for other sounds like synthesizer basses or drums? Maybe even vocals? I don't know. Hysteresis. Oh, that looks like a like a 
something from child tape. Let's see. Child tape model. Interesting. What is width? Nonlinear hysteresis distortion, similar to the distortion created by magnetic tape or an, e an overdriven transformer. Huh. Neat. I'm really enjoying these uh, these information notes. That's really useful. Also, I've just realized how cool is that? The color of the, every um, node creates a gradient between, like, wow, that's so cool. Um, cable visualizations. What if I, what is cable visualizations? Oh, I think I know what. So, cable visualizations means the cables are getting thicker when there's sound coming through. That's interesting. So that is hysteresis. I don't know what is the width, but I don't think it's about stereo. By the way, we're in the, in the mono mode, but you can also switch to stereo or just left or right. I think that means the other channel gets bypassed, like passed through without processing. Oh, we can also change the input and output gain. It just doesn't... Okay. All right. Yeah, I see. Hey, that's make a lot of sense. So you have plus 18 decibels of gain on input and plus 18 decibels of gain on output max. And there's also dry wet. I think if um, the linear linear phase filter mode would work very well with dry wet because then any filtering would be you know could be transparently mixed back with the clean signal without introducing any phasing phase canceling because there are there is no phase offset depending base like the phase offset is uniform for each frequency but I tr we tried that, it doesn't, didn't end well, so I'm not gonna try it again. Mm. I'm gonna check if everything is recording still, because it will be a little bit of a pain to realize. Oh no, I've been talking to nothingness for the past half an hour. That would suck. <laughs> Actually, I am. I have been talking for half, for half an hour, but that's good. I, I said I'm gonna do longer videos because Making shorter ones takes too much time. There you go. Some of you were happy. Oh, did I crash it? Hello? No? Okay. I think it became unresponsive for a little while. Let's go further. I want to just go through everything here. Let's, let's explore. J Junior B. Okay. <laughs> Why did I read it like Janitor B? <laughs> It's not a janitor, it's, it's a junior. <laughs> I wish I could click and drag over and like replace a connection. Maybe with shift, alt, or control. No. First I need to click to, to drop the connection. Okay, junior B. Whew. Whoa, that's hot. I think I'm gonna have to turn the output gain a little bit. Yeah, maybe by six decibels. What do you think? Man, I think this video is going to be all over the place. Tube drive and tube blend. Is that dry wet? I think so. That's nice. Stages. <laughs> Whoa. That was really hardcore. Okay, this this goes extreme.
that is really, really extreme. In the end, I'll probably try to like chain every single one of these together and see what happens. But that's gonna take some take some work. And I'll need to zoom right out to do that. Metal face. Let's see what metal face does. I think it does a lot of band pass. Yeah, it cuts out the low bat low end. And the high end. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, so increasing gain drowns out the noise. I think that is... If if I am disable the noise for a while, so no noise... It's interesting, like... Look like how the character of the waveform changes. I'm gonna up the gain, up the output. Very interesting. I'm clicking in here, hoping there's maybe will be another plugin with some extra options like the the Centaur. Muff derive. Ooh. I think I'm gonna turn down the output a bit again. What we need is an auto auto gain. Hey, maybe there is that something like that. Utility. DC bias, DC blocker. Okay, I don't think there is an auto gain thing. But we have a compressor. Hmm. No, I don't... I don't know. I don't want to obscure the character of the processing we're doing with a compressor put afterwards. So it could make it easier to like, hear everything. We could try. Make sure it's very clean. Rup. All right, so... I'm in harmony with the tone... Now I'm unison... Okay, so I can maybe just make it... Uh, if I make the attack and release quite long, then... Yeah, I think that will do. I can turn out, turn up the output now. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna try and match the input level. Let's see. Yay! That's <laughs> that was a weird voice crack. Yay! Yeah! All right, I think the compressor is gonna do a good job. Does it have any settings? No. A dynamic range compressor. It sure is. I wonder if Chow is is French. So should I say Jaton? Is his name Jaton? I don't know. If you're French, tell me if that's true. And if you're Jaton, tell me if you are Jaton and if it's true. I'd love to know. All right, this has some settings. Sustain harmonics level and stages. Whew. Let's go with level. Ah, okay, so that's post gain? It seems so. It seems like this is just... Wait, it's not just post gain. Or maybe it is, my compressor is just taking it down. Yeah, it is. Yeah, see, this is the problem of running some processing. I'm not really sure what, what's happening. Mm. 
gotta be careful with that. But the compressor is a nice thing. Okay, so this is this is just output gain level harmonics. It doesn't seem to do anything. I don't hear any difference when the harmonics are at 100% or at zero. Let's try it four stages. Maybe that's going to accentuate it. Nope. I don't see any difference at all. What is this? High quality. Now I enabled high quality. It seems like the only thing that changes, I mean, the harmonics, not the high quality, is it just delays the signal by a tiny bit. Look at this, like... So, no harmonics delays the signal a bit. And yes, harmonics pushes the signal a little bit back, so it like decreases latency. And because of that change, like the spectrum also shows a change. But there really isn't a change. You see, if I just go slowly enough, there isn't a change in the harm in this spectral at all because this is just wiggling phase. Okay, that's weird. I don't know why that exists. It doesn't do what I thought it would do. <laughs> Okay, muff drive is buff. High quality. I wonder why high quality... Let's re read the info. Fuzz effect based on the drive stage from the electroharmonics Big Muff Pi. Okay, that's why the muff. It's interesting that this plugin has a high quality mode. What does it mean? Is this oversampling? Because the entire BYOD plugin has oversampling. So is that on top of that? I would like to know. I, I'm, I'm interested. It's puzzling. Why there is a high quality setting on this plugin and not on everything else? Okay, let's add another one. Ron. I guess that's some neural network thing. Because two ends. That's got to be a neural network thing. Okay, maybe I'll skip the compressor for now. Also, I think I may have to start deleting these modules at some point. <laughs> but they're so cool. Let's let's listen. Oh my goodness, that's loud. I'm going to put the compressor on. And enable it too. Yeah, that's better. Random seed. Okay. Is this really random seed? If this is totally random, why not let me put any number in here? Or at least, like, give me an option to put any number. I mean, it's cool to have presets. And I guess these are numbers that sound good? Or is there, or are these just random numbers that someone chose? Let, maybe the info is going to tell us more. RON is a randomized overdrive neural network. First proposed by Christian Steinmer Metz. This implementation uses a convolutional recurrent neural net. Sweet. Interesting. There's so many different kinds of distortion. It's crazy. Range booster. What is a range booster? I'm gonna read first. Range booster effect inspired by the Dallas Range Master pedal. Okay, so that's a pedal emulation. 
Or at least it's inspired by a pedal. Okay, that's quiet. Uh, is the compressor making it quiet? No. This is called a booster, but it's quieter than everything else. That's interesting. <laughs> I'll use some input gain then. 18 decibels should do. Okay, this seems to apply a little gentle, gentle saturation. Let's add noise to the mix and see what that happen does. Okay, I'm gonna turn down the... I'm gonna turn on the compressor, that's what I'm gonna do. Oh yeah, I'm gonna enable Portamento. And make this monophonic. It's strange, let's see if it has any extra options. It has a high quality mode, just like Muff Drive with that? Yeah, Muff Drive. What does it do? Okay, I'm gonna get away with, do away with the compressor. Instead, I'm gonna lower the input volume. I wonder if this, is, is this a high pass filter fed into a distortion or distortion fed into a high pass filter? I don't know. Something interesting, but kind of strange. I don't really understand. Let's try again. Try some more. Tone the King. I think the plugin is becoming a little bit less responsive. Maybe if I close the existing modules, it's gonna be a little bit more, I don't know. The frame rate isn't great or not in the UI. Let's try at zero with a drive. <laughs> Interesting, that doesn't even start to saturate the, the, the sine wave. Overdrive boost or both? Let's try both. Weird. Okay, I'll make this polyphonic so I can disable the lights. So. Does this create any saturation at all? It seems like all it does is like accentuate the noise. See? All right, I guess it's, uh, I guess it's meant for more of the high mid-rangey things. Oh, wow, that's, that's loud. That's a, like a perfect um, signal when you, you know, receive a message. Oh no, that's horrible. <laughs> the nastiest signal message signal ever. I think that would work well on a guitar. Guitar. Hmm, maybe let's turn down the output.
By the way, these interesting enharmonic tones are what I've already told you. This is the intermodulation distortion. And it sounds a little bit like the DTMF uh, tones from a telephone line. Actually, it sounds very much like that. Hello? Okay, so I guess the Tone King is a very mid-rangey thing. That's very distinct, a very clear description. Tube Screamer, that sounds familiar. I believe that's a pedal. Virtual analog emulation of the clipping stage from the Tube Screamer overdrive pedal. Fantastic. How many diodes? Three diodes or point three diodes? Let's try it on the lower thing. Also, let's bring up the gain or the output. Sounds familiar. Is there any extra setting? No. Drive. Warp. Okay, that's something a little bit more range. What do we have here? Maybe I'll reduce the amount of noise in my input signal. So now it's... This is the clean signal. <laughs> I'm gonna mute the sine wave and... So we just have the noise and we can see the... Interesting. What is that? Let's read. Drive effect based on the nonlinear feedback filters. I thought there is some bandpass filter or a bell filter. Uh, interesting. Drive wave shaper. Okay. Ah, all right. That's uh a typical wave shaping distortion with a bunch of presets. If we disable the noise, we can actually see the exact wave it's going to give us. But I'm going to turn down the output, I think. Whoa, maybe not as much. Oh, interesting. It's a little bit asymmetrical. Sign. Yep. Fuzz. So fuzz is like a wave shaping function that saturates and also has a little bit of noise printed in it, which is kind of weird. What if I add a little bit of actual noise? Okay. 
This sounds like frequency modulation. Oh, we can have a... If I... maybe this... Uh, mute the noise at a decay... It's interesting. Look, the input signal is just a sine wave. It sounds like the... What's it called? The very old <laughs> retro gaming FM synthesis uh, sound card. Adlib, yeah, that's that. That, that sounds like Adlib. Interesting. I'll bring back the sustain. So I'm doing the tr the <laughs> re trick by playing um, neighboring notes. So two sounds at once. So the clean signal, if I play it two octaves higher, free. Oh, sorry, no, I'm playing this. This is really interesting. So this is harmonic. I wish there was a there was an option to oh there is an option to do that yes I can use keys left and right to switch between the presets that's fantastic now we can check them all go so low. <laughs> I'm just playing two notes. Clean signal. It's so low, you can't even hear it. My octaves are at negative three. Interesting sound design techniques, I see. Why is it called West Coast Fall? Is it quite extreme? What about noise for that? A little bit of noise. Interesting. So that's Wave Shaper. I think BYOD is a really interesting plugin. And I think the good thing is that you can build a pretty complex effect and then just have it as a preset in a single plugin so you can very easily plop it onto new things. You don't need to haul a entire track preset or something. One thing I hope will be added in the future is some way to modulate the parameters. Maybe a bunch of macro controls that can be automated or bound to MIDI CCs and then assigned to different knobs and buttons within the patch itself. I think that would really bring out the cool factor 
and allow for some really crazy stuff. Let's see what will happen. Anyway, that's a really cool plugin and I'm gonna be trying it a bunch. Let's go Yen Drive. That's the all oh, the last the last saturation plugin. Sorry, the drive. Wave shaping effects borrowed from the venerable, venerable surge synthesizer. Oh, that's why the wave shaper has all the familiar waves. Aha! Okay, so that was about the wave shaper, but now let's read up on the Yen Drive. I have no idea what that is. Virtual analog emulation of the Zen Drive overdrive pedal by Hermida Audio. Ah, no idea what that is. But that's cool. Okay. Dude, there is three other categories of uh, modules here. All right, let's go. Let's do it. Do it. <laughs> My wife already know what, what I'm going to do. What am I going to do? She was laughing even before I did it. Amp. So amp, amplifier impulse responses. So this is a convolver. I'll turn up. <coughs> okay. Fender, Marshall, Bogner, Custom. How do I put a custom wave? Sh eh? Maybe there is uh, some file dialog opens, lets me load a. Oh, there is! Oh, man. There is a file dialog that lets me... Uh, some... Holy snap! Something crashed. <laughs> uh, Alright, so loading your custom impulse response is uh, dangerous. Can blow up uh, the entire thing. Not great! <laughs> Let's try again. So that's two crashes already. I should have had the crash counter on screen, and I did not. That was a mistake. I didn't have a crash counter. I did not. We're speaking like the same. <laughs> Yay. Yay! Oh, I've put a little light to shine on my face. Shine on me face, mate. But it... Uh, it seems like it fell apart. No longer shines on, on what it was supposed to shine on. <laughs> now it should be brighter a little bit. Yes, please recover from crash. I'm not so fond on losing my progress, so I will! <laughs> yeah, good thing we're only trying out things. No, please wait. Okay, so trying to close the preferences dialog while Ardor is waiting, sorry, loading, isn't gonna work. No, I just have to see the log file. Oh. oh man. Ah uh, yes. No border. Keep above others. No border. Keep above others. No border. Keep above others. No border, keep above others. No border, keep above others. No border, keep above others. No border. 
We're back. Ready to whack. Alrighty, tone. Amp. Impulse responses. So it's a convolver. You can load your cu your custom impulse response. I wonder what format it is. Is it like just a WAV file? I don't know. I don't want to try. Because it crashed. Bass cleaner. What is bass cleaner? That sounds like a... That sounds fishy. I'm... Is that a high pass filter? Is that what it is? Okay, I'm going to disable the sine wave. I will increase the noise. Yeah. All this is, is a high pass filter. Why don't you call it a high pass filter? <laughs> Unless it's doing something extra. A filter to smooth and dampen bass frequencies. Sounds like a high pass filter. Why don't you call it a high pass filter? Do, do are guitar people so stupid that they don't know what a high pass filter is? So you need to call it bass cleaner. Sorry, that's 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 a stupid thing to be angry about. I'm not really angry. I just kind of puzzled. Why is it called bass cleaner and not a high pass filter? <laughs> there is a high cut, so a low pass filter. Why not a high pass or low cut? Calling it low cut would be already easier. Basement tone. I'm gonna enable my sine wave back. Okay, I think that's kind of there's some form of EQ. All right, so you see the frequency response, uh, which we have in the top, in here, or here, I don't know. The frequency response shows that this setting, which means bass at 100%, tilt at zero, and treble at zero, is a transparent setting. It doesn't change the frequency response. It does change the weight, or does it? It doesn't change the way. If it changes the waveform, it's just a tiny bit of delay. Okay, is that is? Okay, let's see. If this is that their neutral setting, it is. Okay, that's good. So again, that's a tiny high pass or a low shelf. is strange. It's some form of EQ. <laughs> I'm not sure what it does. It's kind of weird. Baxendal EQ. Who are you, Baxendal EQ? An EQ filter based on Baxendal EQ circuit. Ooh, okay. Hey, that seems more useful, like it can actually seriously boost the lows with this. All right. Graphic EQ. All right, so here we have a simple six band graphic equalizer. And it doesn't do anything above 5k, so it's not like a shelf. Uh, this also isn't a shelf filter, it's just a... Uh, yeah. Yep. Tone. High cut. Yeah, that's a... That's a low pass, I mean. It does what it says. It cuts the highs. I'd like the... I'd like the bass cleaner to be called low cut, to be consistent with high cut and also like it's easier to find. Lo-fi impulse responses, that's interesting. 
case you're one. Uh. <laughs> wow. That is a steep low path. Low, low. Yeah, that's a steep low pass. Casio 2. Cassette speaker. Toy circuits. Toy mic. Yamaha. Yep, that's a bunch of lo-fi impulse responses. I think that's that can be very useful. Lo-fi IRs, muff tone. Okay, we have we had something called muff drive. I think these will come together. Let's try that. So first, muff drive is a long or clean signal. Muff drive plus muff tone. And now without, without muff drive, and now clean. Let's just muff, try just muff tone. This is some form of a high shelf. And this is some form of a low shelf. Despite being called mids. Oh, but it behaves differently if you have the tone. Okay, so mids do nothing. <laughs> the mids knob does nothing if you don't have the tone knob up. Okay, there's also a bunch of different models. Triangle. I live in Poland, so I need to try Russian. Okay, let's read about this. Muff tone, an emulation of the tone stage from various big muff style pedals. Okay. So I guess it's not... What about muff drive? A fuzz effect based on the drive stage from the Electro Harmonics Big Muff Pi. So maybe these aren't so closely related after all. Oh well. SVF. SVF means State Variable Filter. And this is kinda... I'm, I'm double puzzled because I was... Earlier I was looking for a filter or a... A general filter effect. <laughs> and there is none. I mean, there is a high cut, <laughs> which is a low pass. And there is bass cleaner, which is a high pass. And there is SVF, which is low pass or... Yeah. I mean, you'll see. I kind of don't understand because... I assume bass cleaner is, is called that to make it easier to identify what this does. But SVF is called... Like, it's, if, you don't, if you're not technical, you're certainly not gonna know what SVF means. And so, I don't know, bass cleaner seems to be named for people who are not technical, but SVF seems to be called for people who are technical. So it's like, either it's not inconsistent or I, it seems very inconsistent. <laughs> I'd prefer this to be called filter. 
or state or SV filter or S state variable filter, just a full name. I'm gonna turn off the, the sine wave. So what this is, is a low pass filter with resonance, but if we move the mode up at 50%, this is a band pass filter. However, at 100%, it is a high pass filter. So this is three filters in one with a smooth transition between, between them. And that's something I would find very useful. One thing I am missing is a notch filter. <laughs> but yeah, I guess um, it's po it it would pro possibly be <laughs> it would post <laughs> it's probably possible to do a notch filter by combining two state variable filters with a mixer to create a notch. But I I'm not sure how to do that. Okay, so that's a state variable filter. Multi mode. Oh. Oh. So we also have a mode where we can choose one or another, and there's a multi mode which is enabled by default where we can smoothly transition. Like under the hood, I I'm pretty sure this just changes the values, and you can even see that the. Spectrum response, frequency response is animated. It's not jumping immediately, so it's not switching anything. It's slowly, slowly, I mean, it's quickly, but it's smoothly interpolating the value that we had before if we disable the multi mode. So, you see, I can achieve the same effect by quickly, swiftly jolting the knob. As to changing the switch. That's cool. That's fun. Okay, tone. TS tone. What is a TS tone? <laughs> Seems like it's a low pass <laughs> that goes from quite dull to not so quite dull. <laughs> It's probably some something modeled after some model that was made somewhere some decades ago, but yeah, I think the color also suggests to me it's it's a pedal emulation. Maybe I'm wrong. Let's read <laughs> virtual analog emulation. Ha! Of the tube screamer's tone circuit. Aha! I wonder if it's just a filter. <laughs> Me. Maybe not. Maybe it does saturate, for example. For that, I would need to hit it with a hot signal. And I will do that. Hitting it with a hot signal. No, it does not saturate at all. This is just a filter! Nothing to it. It's just a filter with a reduced, just a gentle or a single pole low pass with a reduced range of of frequency of cut of frequency. Nothing special here. At least nothing special that I can tell. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna reduce this pile because I think BYOD is having a little bit trouble to draw the the canvas swiftly treble booster so i guess that's a high shelf it is a high shelf a treble boosting filter based on the on the tone circuit in the clone centaur distortion pedal okay i wonder you see i am feeding super hot signal into that. I can be feeding even more super hot signal. Maybe at some point it will it will saturate. Let's let's find that point. Oh let's give it another 18 decibels of clean gain. 
Maybe then it will saturate. No, it will not. This is not anything sophisticated. This is just a high shell filter. I mean, <laughs> it does what it's, the name says. I just don't know what is it about the emulation of a circuit. It seems to do exactly what a simple high shell filter does. Uh, it's not a complaint. I'm just kind of puzzled. Utility, clean gain, DC bias. So I guess this can create a DC offset. I wonder if we'll see that on the... Uh, we, we probably can, but I need to... Yep. I will turn down the... I think I can mute the noise. So you can see this creates a, a DC offset. Where this is useful in, in such a plugin is that we can drive... Um, Junior B was a hardcore one, let's do that. We can drive any thing. Okay, it's gonna be super loud. Let's turn this down. By introducing DC bias, we can change the, the tone of distortion quite a bit. Why is turning the tube drive down making it louder? So adding DC bias is a... And there's another thing called DC blocker, which is just a high pass filter. <laughs> a steep one, I guess. So <laughs> basically if we... And DC is direct current. It's If we apply DC bias, we can use a DC blocker to remove it. And it's just a high pass filter. <laughs> and really to block DC, there is no need for a frequency control. <laughs> As you can see, we have blocked DC already. I mean, if it's ch if it's quickly changing DC, then that's gonna be useful. And I think that might be the case because if we have a distortion type that is highly asymmetrical, maybe a wave kind, some kind of wave shaping. Half wave positive, yeah. I think if we use some kind of wave shaper, it's highly, yeah, highly uh, asymmetric. You can see that adding a DC blocker is going to help us make the waveform. Ah, shite! Didn't want to do that. It's gonna help us make the waveform more centered. And yeah, we can up the filter to 50 hertz, so we are cutting off lower stuff. But this is actually a high-pass filter. So, yeah. It's just a one with a very specific... Probably it's quite sharp. It, it, it probably has a lot of stages to, to have as, as high slope of uh, frequency response as possible. But other than that, it's just a high pass filter with a specifically tuned frequency cutoff control that has, you know, a very specific range. It doesn't go higher than 50 hertz. Utility. Frequency splitter. Ah, that's an interesting one. So this is a crossover filter. So we can separate high... Actually, we can separate it into three different... Wow, that's cool. By the way, what does it say about the DC blocker? Maybe something special. A DC blocking filter with adjustable cutoff frequency. Yes. 
Split array crossover filter with three outputs. Splits a signal into three frequency bands. Exactly. So now we can have different distortion on lows. Yeah, we can, let's do that because this is basically what the plugin is about. We can have different, I mean, it's about building your own distortion from various building blocks. And there's so many different building blocks. Like that's so cool. So we can distort lows with junior B, mids with wave shaper and leave the kais clean, for example. Now we add a mixer, utility mixer. Now we mix together these three. We can add a DC blocker after that. And now our, I'll add a little noise. Oh, that's the other way around. Okay, so this is the low frequencies. That explains everything. I mean, it makes sense. Low frequencies on the bottom of the window. It makes sense. So I okay, I'll I'll do it like that. So high frequencies on the top. I can see some people being skeptical about BYOD when there is something like Cardinal, where you also have a bunch of modules. You can also wire them however you want and actually you have way more freedom but i think the strength of byod is that it's also very simple and cardinal is quite intimidating especially for new users plus i think cardinal could be more cpu heavy and also it it's definitely a much larger uh, install like you're gonna need a lot more disk space just to install cardinal um, plus, um, BYOD has some unique features in that you can configure global oversampling, which you can't do in Cardinal. Um, individual modules may do oversampling, like it's up to them. And you can also configure how the filters behave. They can be either minimum phase or linear phase. And with linear phase filters, you could use the state, state value very you could use a state variable filter or like the frequency splitter and process different bands separately and then mix them together without any phasing issues. Of course, that would cost you a little bit of latency and optionally possibly create some pre-ringing. I don't see an option to do this kind of stuff in Cardinal. So yeah, I think Cardinal and BYOD can do similar things, but they are different and I think it's worth giving both a try and deciding which one works better for every individual purpose. From this point onwards, my video capture started dropping huge amounts of frames and has turned the rest of the video into an incoherent mess. Feel free to just stop watching here. But I've decided to include the remaining broken part just in case you might find it useful anyway. Sorry. And I hope this video was worth your time. Up to this point, that is. Okay, I'm gonna go now. Don't make a mess. Leave the key in the mailbox when you leave. Mids in the middle and lows on the bottom. And the fourth channel, the mixer is unused. Sweet. Let's hear it now. <laughs> this thing slaps. Uh, Okay, we can kind of, I mean, we can't solo the channels. I wish there was a solo and mute control for every single channel. That would be very useful to check what we are doing. So that's the highs. This is clean. Okay, it's, yeah, we can't really solo this. The only way I can do that is, unless there's a switch. Splitter, merger, tuner, other switch. Don't see a switch. Yeah, so um, our highs go unprocessed. Let's hear just the highs. Ta -da. So everything above 6.3 kHz goes unprocessed. Then we process our mids with a wave shaper. Yeah, we can cut off a little bit more. And then we process our lows with Junior B. <laughs> 
and then we sum everything together. That is thick! Now we can apply the DC positive mover. I'm just starting. No. And you can see the DC blocker actually is very useful, and the extended range is actually very useful here. Because you can see, with the DC blocker disabled, we are like our waveform is overshooting way far. And you can, we can make the waveform much more compact and therefore efficient. So it, it peaks slower, doesn't need as much headroom, but it sounds pretty much the same. And that's very, that's actually very important because if, like, solo, it's okay. But then in the mix, when you add drums, leads, vocals, uh, synths, whatever, th this extra headroom that this requires without the DC blocker is gonna just, you know, be a problem. So using the DC blocker is a really good idea in here. Because it gets rid of the unnecessary amplitude while it sounds the same. Almost the same. I think the change is well worth it. All right, so that's uh, how you can use a frequency splitter and a mixer to process your sound in multiple bands, free bands. We could also, of course, use another frequency splitter, fre frequency splitter to separate one of these bands into three and say, use another mixer to like, you know, we could spread it out. I'm not gonna do that because we could spend all day just doing this. <laughs> mixer oscilloscope. Oh, we have a scope. That's so cool. Is there any, are there any settings? There are none. But it does, uh, it does use auto trigger like X32, simple scope that I'm using, which means it latches onto the wave cycle. I'm gonna show you without, without all the trigger, your wave, your oscilloscope would dance around like this. You see that? And with different frequencies, they will be different. That's nasty, you don't want that. I mean, it's hard to look at. So I'm using continuous trigger. Whoa. <laughs> oh, in some frequencies, the, the DC blocker no longer catches the, the peaks. Okay, I think we're gonna need some extra saturation to or we could use a phase rotator i don't know if there is a phase rotator here it would be sweet if there was a phase rotator oh man that would be so good i don't think there is though oh man oh uh, i think rotary is no no oh ciao please add a phase rotator or an opus filter to byod that would be so useful opus filters especially if you can stack them in large amounts are so good for changing the tone of your distortion that's a very useful thing to have I really hope it's, it can be added to the IoT because it's uh, an all-pass filter, or also called, also known as a phase rotator, would help us get rid of these crazy peaks because it would like slant the waveform, making it, and unless we distort it afterwards, it's gonna sound pretty much the same, but it's gonna be more compact. This is sometimes done on the radio, I think, as a radio to make sure that the signal modulates better. So it's applied to human voice also because sometimes when you speak to the microphone, your, um, your waveforms come out not exactly symmetrical, and then can use a either a DC blocker or a yeah, so basically a sharp high pass filter or a an all pass filter, also known as a phase rotator, to push it, like slant it, and make the peaks dismount and be more compact. Anyway, that's a tangent, of course. Yeah, and that's the oscilloscope is really cool. Nice. What else is there? Panner. Oh, oh, it's also an auto panner. It's not just any panner. It can it can oscillate. So that is a um, auto pen processor. Really cool. It has a bunch of settings. There's a pen, this is called pen law in, in DWs. So how do you calculate the difference between left and right channel depending when you pen? And there's stereo mode, which means it's either stereo, which is what you have now, or it's dual mono. It's the penning effect with mode and modulation options. That's a really cool panner. Nice. I am gonna go back to mono though because I set up my mono my uh, analysis for a mono signal and I'm a bit worried it may become pretty wrong. Stereo merger, left, right, or mid side. Ah, that's great. Oh, that's so cool. Stereo splitter and stereo merger. Oh man, you can split your signal into mid side. So, like, oh, man, and then process it separately and then bring it back together. That's so good. That is really cool. Awesome. I'm not gonna play with it now, but that's so cool. My cat is uh, making strange noises. <laughs> that's really nice. Tuner. Let's see, what does it say? 
Wow, that's so cool. Oh, funny. <laughs> it says all of these are off. But I'm really... <laughs> I guess you should plug the tuner into the uh, dry signal without any distortion first. Oh, it still says it's not in tune. Maybe the noise is throwing you off. Let's see the noise. Okay, with noise it's working fine. So the, the tuner can handle noisy signals very well. Other than that, it's cool. What else do we have? We have other. Chorus. If there was a flanger, or if there was a phaser, we could use that uh, as a... We could possibly use that as, a, as an all-pass filter, because a phaser is built on top of an all-pass filter. It's just modulating the all-pass filter, and it's mixing the dry and wet signals together. Because the all-pass filter creates a phase shift, which is dependent on the frequency, it creates a series of notches when you mix this together with the original signal because of phase cancellation. But we don't see... I don't see a phaser here. All right, so that was utility and other chorus compressor. So chorus, pretty self-explanatory. It's a chorus. Does it have any extra settings? Clean and lo-fi. I guess lo-fi saturates. I wonder if we make it mix 1%. Oh, I think it's all. It's not all wet. It's dry wet. <laughs> okay. Utilitaire, other envelope, delay. I think my close tuner and the oscilloscope, because I don't need them. I'll close these two as well. Delay. Ah. Uh, and this opportunity with the delay is letting it sync to. Oh, maybe it does. Hold on, I didn't check. Mm, no, it doesn't. It does not detect the tempo from the DAW or plugin host and doesn't let you sync to the tempo, which is a big missed opportunity because that's quite essential in any delay plugin in my book. If I'm gonna use a delay musically, it has to sync to the tempo. Otherwise, what am I gonna do? Like do it by ear and waste my time just, you know, dialing in milliseconds and then having it slightly off and doing some weird stuff. No, I want it to be on time. Uh, of course, not everyone does that, but that's just my preference. So I'm not gonna be using the delay, at least not for musical effects. You can still use it for some other stuff, like, you know. And it also has a lo-fi mode. I think I'm gonna crash. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing some nasty stuff here. Actually, I'm feeding delay from the chorus. There's also a ping pong mode. Oh, that's great. Ping pong means it, it creates a reflection in left and right channels. Hmm. How do you say that? It switches left and right channels. So ping pong is more stereo. Okay. Envelope filter. That's a really cool thing. And really f f I, I think it's really nice that, that it was included. Uh, this is, you could say, it, um, sometimes this is called auto wah wow. Um. I guess you know why. Because it says wow wow. Can also band best. Wow, wow. <laughs> There's a speed. This controls the attack and release times of the envelope follower module that works inside. So, higher speed will cause it to move faster in sensitivity. It's like the gain of the signal before the envelope follower, so it will like, change the frequency, the cut frequency of the filter more with less input. It doesn't have any extra special direct control. What does that mean? <laughs> oh, so we can <laughs> we can make this envelope filter not be an envelope filter, but just a filter with enabling direct control. How is it different from SVF or state variable? No, not this one. Stereo. Did I? Do I have it still? No, I call it from state variable filter. We have frequency. Check. We have Q. It's resonance. The same thing. Check. And we have mode, which is type. Cal, do you think the naming could be unified between these? <laughs> it seems so. Why does it have a manual mode if it's the same as SVF then? 
I really don't know. Okay, there is one change. If you turn the speed low, the envelope following is still going to occur with respect with like appropriate attack and release times. It's just it's not gonna take the input from it's gonna analyze the amplitude of, of the input, it's gonna analyze the level of your the knob. I think what would be really fun here is a sidechain input. So I see that no, there are plugins, there are modules that have multiple inputs. A sidechain input that lets you apply the filter with a, with an amplitude of another signal. That would be an interesting thing here, I think. So that's another idea I have for improvements. Okay, let's see. Or is there anything else? Gate. So that's a standard noise gate. So if there's some hiss in your guitar tones, and you can use this to get rid of them. I don't want to like spend too much time covering a, a gate. It's great that it's here. Rotary, that's a, I guess that's a rotary emulation. Oh, I think a really cool thing is that... Actually? Yeah. So the cool thing is... Uh, I didn't actually pay attention to this, but this is really nice. Is that BYOB packages a stereo signal in a single noodle. We have this virtual cable. We don't have to plug in left and right cables like you do have to do in Carla, for example. I mean, it gives you a little bit less control, but overall it makes it way easier to do stuff. And you still can split the stereo signals into mono. We have two sockets and you can merge them together, but you don't have to. So it can convey a stereo signal or maybe, yeah, a stereo signal. Does the rotary have any extra stuff? Doesn't seem to. Let's read the a rotary speaker effect. Yay. I will not make it. <laughs> oh, I, I accidentally clicked on the about of the envelope for the envelope filter. A a envelope filter. I don't. I don't think that's. I think that's a that's a mistake. Sir. It should be an 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 envelope filter or a envelope filter. English isn't my native language, so. If any of you guys speak English natively, maybe you can correct me. Is it should it be an envelope filter or an a, or should it be a envelope filter? It reminds me of uh, some British car show. <clears throat> the envelope filter with low pass, band pass, and high pass filter types use the right click menu to control the filter modulation directly. Again, it's not a right click menu. Right clicking doesn't do anything. It's a rocket button thingy. But that's a minor complaint. Rotary spring reverb. It's interesting that the only reverb we have here is a Springer reverb, so this seems quite advanced. I think I'll need to zoom out a little bit, because I don't think I can fit all the modules. Actually, I'm not using these. I'll get rid of the modules I'm not actually using to process the sound. Oh, this device. Let's put the sudo screen over the bottle. Well, let's see what it does. Oh. The problem with connecting these cables is that you need to plan ahead because if I just want to, oh, I grab this and put it in the output. No, you can't. First, first, you need to click on that to disconnect it. Only then you can try to connect it. That's a little bit of a problem. Ooh. I'll plan a higher octave. Oh, that's nasty. I think I'll turn down chorus depth and rate and mix. Maybe, you know what, I'll just feed it raw input. That's gonna be better. Yeah, so the... Okay, I can also raise the input output level. So this is the dry signal, just the sine wave, and this is with the effect. So nothing special there. I'll add a little bit of attack and the release for my sine wave. So there isn't this hard click. Okay, that's better. So this is kind of see size reflection spin damping. Let's add a little bit of white noise. Okay, I thought maybe if I disable it and enable it again, it's gonna cut off the tail. But no, it keeps going. <laughs> Let's make it all wet. I hope. Oh no. Oh, I can't make it all wet? Can I? Oh no, that's a bummer. Because being able to process this, the reverb, the wet reverb signal separately and then mix it back to your clean signal, wherever it is, would be very useful. So if I may suggest another improvement to the plugin, please make it so that the mix can go to all wet. 
and not just 50% wet and 50% dry. That would be awesome. Okay, so let's get it. What's, what is shake? It's interesting, that's such a simple thing. A sine wave, some noise, and a reverb. But this is quite a distinct sound. Let, let's put this into our frequency splitter and pipe it up the other end, see what happens. I just gonna be super loud, so I'm gonna turn it down. That's interesting. Oh, something is clicking. What if we change the sound wave to a saw wave? Let's hear just the reverb. I'm gonna make this click, make it click. I could use a chorus, maybe. Okay, so our... Is there like a drive Yes, okay. So this is my input signal now. Just a pulse of sa sawtooth with a bit of noise. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. I hope this video was interesting or helpful. If you would like to support my work, you can go to patreon.com slash anfa or liberapay.com slash anfa and give me a buck or two every month to join the amazing people that are already doing it and letting me keep making videos. And if you'd like to talk open source software for audio production, uh, get some help, uh, get some inspiration, please head over please head over to my community chat at chat.anfa.xyz. I'll see you there. Now go and build your own distortion.